Matt Taylor is the Director of Natural Capital and Research for the Bennett Mary Regional Group in Queensland and is an ecologist with 15 years experience in nature conservation, biodiversity monitoring and sustainable land management. Um, his recent work has focused on the environmental markets and the development of natural capital accounting systems. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, everyone. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so just a quick overview of some of the work that Burnett Mary Regional Group's been doing in this space. Um, it's primarily focused on um, natural capital accounting, which has been discussed already, but also um, engaging in um, established and, and uh, emerging environmental markets. Um, and in a nutshell, what we're trying to do is measure the condition of environmental assets to inform land management and also to inform investment so those data systems can from, serve, um, serve multiple purposes. So what is a natural capital account? Um, this has been covered um, by, by people already, but I'll give you my take on it. Um, so we've been engaging in, I guess, two different sort of systems for assessing natural capital. One of them is the nature of repair market, which was, was talked about earlier. And another is the accounting for nature framework, which um, are both systems for measuring changes in environmental condition and relating those changes to, to management practices. Uh, a natural capital account is essentially like a financial report, but for environmental assets. And some examples sort of environmental assets include all of those things that we all sort of manage and think about. So waterways, forests, carbon, soils, uh, CO2. Uh, and it's a, a way of essentially putting nature on the balance sheet is the, the terminology, um, elevating the, the way that we use this kind of data to the same um, position in decision making as financial information. And that is sounds like a relatively sort of simple um, step, um, but but what it essentially means is that you know by shifting the language and and pulling these documents sort of front and center in how we manage different businesses and organisations, um, as as a way of engaging with with uh, you know different types of funders and different interests groups in terms of natural resource management. Uh, Another thing which is really um, key to natural capital accounting is that independent audit process, which was discussed earlier as well. So, you know, that's really critical. Um, it's a, it's a, a sort, of, sort of an add-on to producing a typical biodiversity report and it ensures that accuracy and transparency. Um, and that's particularly important for environment, um, natural resource businesses, farms and whatnot, um, forestry organisations for being able to make claims about transparency of their practices and the benefit of improved practices. And then as a, an environmental organisation, um, the work that we've done has been really helping to inform how we invest in nature, um, how we target our um, environmental works to the, the places that need them most. Uh, so one of the big projects that we've worked on up here is a regional environmental account, which was delivered under the Accounting for Nature framework. Um, and, it, and it kicked off with um, an, a comprehensive kind of regional assessment across 5.6 million hectares um, and covering a, a subset of asset, asset classes. And these were native vegetation, native fauna, waterways and aquatic fauna. So these were the, the assets which we had the best uh, data on um, in the kind of terrestrial realm, but which um, were also a really significant focus of our investment. Um, and so that assessment was undertaken in 2022 and it's being used now as a kind of a screening and prioritization tool. Um, it's, it's quite a rich data set and so we're using it to prioritize long-term riparian restoration projects like the one in the picture there, um, targeting those two areas which are going to deliver, you know, a whole range of co-benefits including um, threatened species habitat improvement, carbon sequestration and water quality benefits. And that's just one example of sort of many ways that that data set's being used in the region. Uh, another project we're working on at the moment is extending that regional account to cover coastal and marine environmental assets. So uh, first time around, these, these assets missed out. Uh, we were trying something new, and so we didn't want to bite up more than we could chew. But now that we've got these systems fairly well embedded in our business, we um, are extending the footprint of that account to cover some of the other really important assets that we manage. So being at the southern end of the Great Barrier Reef, um, marine fauna, species like turtles and dugongs are really important and the focuses of management up here. Um, inshore reefs, um, 
uh, you know, of cultural significance to the traditional owners um, in this region. Coastal wetlands really underpin it in people's livelihoods up here and are really sensitive to some of the, um, you know, climate change drivers, but also how we manage our catalogs. And this photo here is a great sandy strait, which we've um, been we're working on a project at the moment that's about to, about to launch. Um, and this is a Ramses site. Uh, uh, Ramses SAR site and going to be uh, the focus of a case study as part of that marine account. But the other, um, I guess, really sort of significant um, project that we have at the moment is developing and embedding environmental and natural capital accounting in, in our project scale delivery. So using it as a monitoring and evaluation tool for measuring the improvements in, um, in environmental condition, but also cultural condition. Um, associated with direct on-ground activities. And I think that's the, the piece of the puzzle that's really going to connect the work that we do to environmental markets. Um, it's got a pathway to market through um, accounting for nature and green collars, nature credits, um, nature plus crediting system. Um, and, you know, um, pro programs like the nature of air market are also going to be based on, you know, being able to systematically document the improvement in condition associated with environmental actions. And so we've got two projects where we're trialling methodologies at the moment, one on Gari, um, formerly known as Fraser Island, where we're doing a cultural burning program with the Bachelor traditional owners, and another one working with Kabi Kabi traditional owners on Munabula, which is the Mary River looking at flood resilience and how that can improve cultural and environmental condition. Um, so there's sort of five main phases of creating an environmental account. Um, scoping, which is you know, getting together all of your stakeholders and, and people to identify what assets there are to focus on because you can't necessarily measure everything all at once. Um, then tra training and capacity building. So as an NRM organisation, that's one of our kind of core functions. And so we've been working to build up the capacity of not just our own team, but also the partner organisations that we work with, including traditional owners. Um, method of development and accreditation is a really critical component of both the accounting for nature system, but also of the nature repair market. And we're engaging in, in that kind of method development process on like, both of those fronts. Data collection and aggregation is, you know, the bit that everyone thinks about. Where do you get the data and what do you do with it? Um, but that, you know, really fits into a broader workflow. And then finally, you know, documenting all of that in, in a public and transparent way. So that's how we sort of see the workflow. And we're trying to build that into our business processes across the board to be kind of market ready um, with good data management systems for, for these emerging um, environmental markets. Um, yeah, and so I guess lastly, just circling back on why we would do this. Um, and for me, I'm an ecologist, but um, I've realised that the biggest barrier to getting environmental conditions to improve is not, you know, what to do, but how to fund it. And so this is uh, for us a really promising new opportunity for diversifying how we fund environmental programs. Um, you know, climate change has already seen a lot of movement um, in this space in terms of um, the, the, you know, the established carbon market, which has really um, brought a lot of investment into um, vegetation restoration across the country. Uh, and natural capital is what we sort of see as the new carbon, and, and it's really largely following that same playbook in terms of met developing these markets and developing these systems, but broadening the concept of the ways, of the types of things that we can invest in. Um, yeah, and so, you know, to, to facilitate investment in natural assets, we need to be able to place a value on them. We need to have that data. Um, we, you know, the systems that we use don't put a, a necessarily financial value on them, but we systematically apply, um, you know, condition indices and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, and, you know, the, the investment in measurement systems is really key for us. Um, being able to do this stuff efficiently um, really underpins the, uh, the ability to um, build them into projects without them becoming the project and being able to focus on the actual good environmental work. And so, you know, these systems we see is um, really essential to being able to engage in these emerging markets, you know, like reef credits, nature plus, and, and whatever else comes along. Bit of a rush, but that's it for me. Fantastic.